Shalom, 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 shalom. All praises, all honor, all glory to the Most High, our Heavenly Father. Shalom, Israel. Good to see y'all virtually. Good to, to be able to speak to y'all again, man. We back with another one. All esteem to the Father. I'm a Yah. Praise Yah for this opportunity to just make another video, man. It's been a minute. It feel like it's been a minute. But anyway, last time I was with y'all, um, you, me and my wife, we got together, we did a DNA test. Um, I, I did an, uh, uh, another one with those results and found out more information about my exact tribes. So we're gonna get into more of that and that, that'll be like some personal Israelite history. So we'll get into that uh, in the future. But here and now, we wanna talk about um, more Messianic Hebrew Israelites of the past, man. Last time we talked about uh, Asher Ben Levi, uh, a small boy who, who ended up believing in Mashiach and his uh, Hebrew parents uh, found out, more specifically his, uh, his father I found out and actually went after him and I believe even martyred him, killed him. Um, I, the father may have ended up believing. Uh, go rewatch that video if you haven't. But uh, we're going to get back into it. Um, that was in the year, about the year 300 and something. But now we're going close to the 400. So let's get into it. Romanos de Melodis. I got my my laptop right here. And, you know, we're just going to go through some of the info and share the information of our uh, Hebrew ancestors who believed in Mashiach. St. Romanos flourished during the reign of uh, Anastasius. He was from Emesa of Syria and apparently was born of Jewish parents. So see, we see his Hebrew ancestry here. In a hymn, which is a, a, a song, a, a spiritual song, in a hymn written in his honor in Greek, says it says that he was of Hebrew stock and it was furthermore noted that he uses many Semitic idioms in his writings. So like, uh, for example, in the Gospels, they're written in, they're written in Greek, Koine Greek, uh, like a commoner's Greek, but um, there's Semitic idioms within them, the way Yeshua speaks, um, the way he speaks with the rabbis, you know, they, they, it's, it's written in Greek, but they're speaking uh, Hebrew vernacular. Uh, he was baptized uh, as an Orthodox Christian. So he is one of the uh, Messianic Israelites who ended up joining the Orthodox Church. Now, we don't know the exact numbers, but there are sources that say that um, a lot of Messianic Israelites joined in with the Nubians, um, the Syrians, I believe, um, and the Egyptians and the Coptic Church. Uh, possibly the, the Ethiopic church. Um, and then in North Africa, where you have the Carthage area. Uh, we were, a lot of us were in that area before coming down uh, later on in history. So this is, um, he's from Syria. So he would have been from the Syrian group of um, Orthodox Christians, also called Jacobites. Okay, so let's see. He became a deacon in the church of Beirut, and he was the first composer of the Kantakia, the foremost of which is that of the Feast of Christ's Nativity. So he, he, uh, he became one of the first composers um, and did a, a, something during the Feast of Christ's Nativity, which I believe is Christmas. Um, Saint Romanos was inspired by the hymns of Saint Ephraim of Syria, who was another Syrian Christian. Uh, I couldn't see if he was from Hebrew stock, but his name is Ephraim. I mean, who knows? You know, he could have been. What else do we have here? So here's some songs. I believe these are songs. Well, this is called a, a polytikion. What is a, a polytikion? An a polytikion or a dismissal hymn is sung at an Orthodox Christian worship service. And it summarizes the feast of that day. So here is an example of our Messianic Hebrew brother, 
doing one of his Orthodox Christian hymns. This is the Apolitikion of Romanos, the, uh, the Melodis. Okay, now this, this one in particular is a song for his feast day. So let's read it. The image of God was faithfully preserved in you, O Father. For you took up the cross and followed Christ. By your actions, you taught us to look beyond the flesh, for it passes, rather to be concerned about the soul, which is immortal. Wherefore, O holy Romanos, your soul rejoices with the angels. So you know how in the Orthodox Church, uh, they, they do great reverence um, to the ones before them, calling them um, fa Father and, uh, and uh, Holy and stuff. So, you know, they got the saints and stuff. That's how they roll. Um, but let's see. I'm trying to get the uh, sign right. <laughs> let's see. Okay. Let's see if we can find some of his songs. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see one of his. He was a central figure in the history of Byzantine music. It seems like wherever Hebrews go, we excel in music and in the arts. He was called the Pindar of rhythmic poetry. So that's kind of like rap almost in a sense too. It says his earliest manuscripts are dated centuries after um, after uh, his time where he was flourishing. But he was the foremo foremost um, composer of his time when it came to Orthodox Christian uh, worship. Let's see, let's read, let's read this legend. According to legend, Romanos was not at first considered to be either a talented reader or singer. He was, however, loved by the patriarch of Constantinople because of his great humility. Once, around the year 518, while serving in the church of the Penagia, the church of the Penagia at Blackamere, during the all-night vigil for the Feast of Nativity of Christ. So we read about that, we read about that. Let's see. He was assigned to read the Casima verses from the Psalter. He read so poorly that another reader had to take his place. Dang, that's, that's sad. But he was humble, he was humble about it. Some of the lesser clergy ridiculed Romanus for this. And being humiliated, he sat down in one of the choir stalls. Overcome by weariness and sorrow, he soon fell asleep. As he slept, the Theotokos, which is uh, what Orthodox Christians call Mary, um, it's a whole um, theology behind that. Mother of God is what they call her because um, the divinity of Christ. I mean, I, I don't know. I still don't know how I feel about that because she's the mother of Christ, but not the father. So it's like something that you have to think about. Um, something that has to be further uh, studied and focused on. So let's go. Let's continue. But Mary a, a, appeared to him with a scroll in her hand. She commanded him to eat the scroll, and as soon as he did so, he awoke. He immediately received a blessing from the patriarch, mounted the pulpit, and chanted extemporaneously his famous Contachion of the Nativity. Today, the virgin gives birth to him who was above all being, the emperor, the patriarch, clergy and the entire congregation were amazed at both the profound theology of the hymn and Romana's clear saunter's voice as he sang. So that's something I, I you know, I take personal and I want to pull out of that is that um, good music, uh, music that could be played in a, in a uh, place of worship was not only, you know, clear and uh, good to the ear, but it was also theologically profound, which is what we want to do um, over here with, uh, as a Yahoo uh, and all the stuff that I put out. Uh, it's going to be theologically sound and it's going to be historically sound. It ain't going to be uh, nothing crazy coming out of here. But you also going to see my growth. So like you see some of my older stuff when I was more influenced by uh, One West Doctrines um, and some of these other brothers out here to more doing more of my own research and coming out. And you know, all the way up until now, when even 
it's just so much coming out and we're gonna uh, keep on putting out. Y'all just take this walk with me, take this journey with me, and we walking together and we give all praise to the Most High because He walking with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. All right, so let's see. According to tradition, this was the very first contact Keon ever sung. The Greek word contact Keon refers to the shaft on which a scroll is wound. Hence the significance of the Theotokos Mary's command for him to swallow a scroll, indicating that his compositions were by divine inspiration. Hallelujah. The scene of Romano's first performance is often shown in the lower register of Pakrov icons. Pakrov icons. Interesting. It says an example is above. Interesting. Is there any other, uh, let's see, any other things that we can read about my brother here? He got songs on the Nativity of Christ, the Martyrdom of Stephen, the Death of a Monk, the Last Judgment, the Prodigal Son, the Rising of Lazarus, uh, Adam's Lament, and the Treachery of Judas. So that's interesting. But the Nativity one is is what everybody say is his best, his best joint, you feel me? Hmm. Interesting. And we got some pictures here. I'll put some images of the pictures here, but um, but yeah, man, I hope y'all enjoyed that story about our Messianic Hebrew brother, uh, Messianic Jewish brother, however you call it. He's an Israelite, get it right, Romanos. Shout out to our ancestors who believe that Hamashiach, y'all need some shine too. Hallelujah. May y'all stay blessed up. Stay tuned for the next one. Shalom.